Isabella II was Queen of Spain from 1833 until her deposition in 1868. She is the only Queen Regnant in the history of unified Spain. Isabella was born in the Royal Palace of Madrid in 1830, the eldest daughter of King Ferdinand VII of Spain, and of his fourth wife and niece, Maria Cristina of the Two Sicilies. She was entrusted to the royal governess Maria del Carmen Máquín y Ortiz de Zorat. Queen Maria Cristina became regent on 29 September 1833, when her three-year-old daughter Isabella was proclaimed sovereign following the death of Ferdinand VII. Isabella succeeded to the throne because Ferdinand VII had induced the Cortés generals to help him set aside the Salic law, introduced by the Bourbons in the early 18th century, and to re-establish the older succession law of Spain. The first pretender to the throne, Ferdinand's brother Infante Carlos, Count of Molina, fought for seven years during Isabella's minority to dispute her title. The supporters of Carlos and his descendants were known as Carlists, and the fight over the succession was the subject of a number of Carlist wars in the 19th century. Isabella's reign was maintained only through the support of the army. The Cortés and the moderate liberals and progressives re-established constitutional and parliamentary government, dissolved the religious orders and confiscated their property, including that of the Jesuits, and tried to restore order to Spain's finances. After the Carlist War, the regent, Maria Cristina, resigned to make way for Baldomero Espartero, Prince of Vergara, the most successful and most popular Isabelline general. Espartero, a progressive, remained regent for only two years. Her minority saw tensions with the United States over the Amistad affair. Baldomero Espartero was deposed in 1843 by a military and political pronunciamiento led by generals Leopoldo O'Donnell and Ramon Maria Navarez. They formed a cabinet, presided over by Joaquin Maria López y López. This government induced the Cortés to declare Isabella of age at 13. Isabella was declared of age and swore the 1837 constitution on 10 November 1843 age 13. Despite the alleged parliamentary supremacy, in practice, the double trust led to Isabella having a role in the making and toppling of governments, undermining the progressives. The uneasy alliance between moderates and progressives that had toppled Espartero in July 1843 was already disintegrating by the time of the coming of age of the Queen. Following a brief government led by progressive Celestiano de Olazaga, the moderates elected their candidate, Pedro José Pidal, to the presidency of the Cortés. After the subsequent decision to dissolve the hostile Cortés by Olazaga on 28 November, rumors about an alleged forcing of the Queen to sign the royal decree spread. As a result, Olazaga was prosecuted, removed from political office, and forced to exile with the Progressive Party already being beheaded, in what was the starting point of the growing disaffection from the Isabeline monarchy. Dominated by the figure of Marshal Navarez, the so-called moderate decade began in 1844. The constitutional reforms devised by Navarez moved away from the 1837 constitution by rejecting national sovereignty and reinforcing the power of the monarch, to the point of a co-sovereignty, between the Cortés and the Queen. On 10 October 1846, the moderate party made their 16-year-old Queen marry her double first cousin Francisco de Assis, Duke of Cadiz, 1822-1902, the same day that her younger sister, Infanta Luisa Fernanda, married Antoine d'Orlanes, Duke of Montpensier. The marriages suited France and Louis-Philippe, King of the French, who as a result bitterly quarrelled with Britain. However, the marriages were not happy. Persistent rumour had it that few if any of Isabella's children were fathered by her king consort, rumoured to be a homosexual. The Carlist party asserted that the heir apparent to the throne, who later became Alfonso XII, had been fathered by a captain of the guard, Enrique Puigmalto y Mayans. In 1847, a major scandal took place when Isabella, age 17, 
publicly showed her love for General Serrano and her willingness to divorce from her husband Francisco de Assis. Though Navarrez and Isabella's mother Maria Cristina solved the problem posed to the monarchical institution, Serrano was shifted away from the capital to the post of Captain General of Granada in 1848. The deterioration of the public image the 21st of December as Maria Isabel Francisca de Assis. Historians have attributed the princess of Asturias' biological parenthood to José Ruiz de Arana. On 2 February 1852, Isabella and the Royal Guard were caught by surprise while the Queen was leaving the chapel of the Royal Palace intending to go with her parade to the Church of Atocha. Martin Marino y Gomez an ordained priest and liberal activist approached the Queen giving the impression of wanting to deliver her a message, and stabbed her. The impact was reduced by the gold embroidery of her dress and by the baleen stays of her corset, and what was intended to be a stab wound to the chest only resulted in a minor incision at the right side of the belly. Marino, quickly seized by the halberdiers of the Royal Guard, with help from the Dukes of Osuna and Tamams, the Marquis of Alcanices and the Count of Pino Hermoso, was removed from Sacerdoce and executed by Garot. Under the government of the Count of San Luis, whose ascension to premiership had been solely founded on the support from the networks of the royal court, the system was in a critical state by June 1854. On 28 June 1854 a military pronunciamiento intending to force the Queen to oust the government of the Count of San Luis, featuring Leopoldo O'Donnell took place in Vicalvaro, the so-called Vicalvarada. Days later, the situation was followed by a full-scale people's revolution, with revolutionary juntas organized on 17 July in Madrid, and barricades erected in the streets. With the prospect of a civil war on the horizon, Isabella was advised to appoint General Espartero as Prime Minister. This renewed ascension of Espartero marked the beginning of the Biennio Progresista. Espartero entered the capital of Spain on 28 July, and proceeded to separate again Isabella from the influence of Maria Cristina. In any case, though Isabella accepted advice from Maria Cristina, she was not characterized for displaying a profound filial love towards her mother. By virtue of a royal decree, Iloilo in the Philippines was opened to world trade on 29 September 1855, mainly to export sugar and other products to America, Australia and Europe. A liberal constitution, the Unborn One, was drafted in 1856, yet it was never enacted as the counter-revolutionary coup by O'Donnell seized power. On 28 November 1857, Isabella II gave birth to a male heir, who was baptized on 7 December 1857 as Alfonso Francisco de Assis Fernando Pio Juan Maria Gregorio y Pelagio. Assumed by historians to be the biological son of Enrique Puigmolto y Mayans the toddler, who replaced Infanta Isabella as Prince of Asturias upon his birth, Isabella II showed a special affection for the child, greater than that shown to her daughters. Isabella had twelve pregnancies, but only five children reached adulthood. Infanta Maria Isabel, 1851 1851-1931 Alfonso XII of Spain, 1857-1885, future King of Spain. Infanta Maria del Pilar, 1861-1879. Infanta Maria de la Paz, 1862-1946. Infanta Maria Eulalia, 1864-1958. There has been considerable speculation that some or all of Isabella's children were not fathered by Francisco de Assis. This has been bolstered by rumors that Francisco de Assis was either homosexual or impotent. Francisco de Assis recognized all of them. He played the offended, proceeding to blackmail the queen to receive money in exchange for keeping his mouth shut. The extortion by her husband would continue and intensify during Isabella's exile. The later part of her reign saw a war against Morocco, 1859-1860, which ended in a treaty advantageous for Spain and cession of some Moroccan territory, the Spanish retake of Santo Domingo, 1861-1865,
and the fruitless Chincha Islands War, 1864-1866, against Peru and Chile. In August 1866, exiled forces comprising both elements from the Democratic and the Progressive Party met secretly in Belgium and subscribed to the Pact of Ostend, S., under the initiative of Marshal Prim, seeking to topple Isabella. On 7 July 1868, Isabella banished her sister and brother-in-law from Spain, as they were linked to a conspiracy against the crown in connivance with generals from the Liberal Union. Since late summer, Isabella II was enjoying her traditional holidays in the coast in Lecertio, Biscay. The royal entourage moved to San Sebastián to hold a concerted meeting with Napoleon III and Eugenia de Montijo, scheduled for the 18th of September. But it did not take place, as the French royals did not arrive in time and it was subsequently aborted. On that day, a pronunciamento took place in Cadiz. Led by Marshal Prim and the Admiral Toppet it marked the beginning of the Glorious Revolution. The Democratic Party provided the insurrection with popular support, making it transcend the nature of a simple military statement into an actual revolution. Factors for the revolution included the weariness of the moderates alienated by the crown and the progressives barely having even the chance to rule. Both developed a vis-a-vis -vis with the Isabelline monarchy. Other factors were the personal behavior of the queen, the corruption, the abortion of the possibility of political reform and the economic crisis alienating the bourgeoisie. By September 1868 Isabella was a repudiated monarch, and, during the early stages of the revolution, instances of political iconoclasm carried out by the masses took place, leading to the destruction of many symbols and the definitive demise of Isabella II's 35-year reign. In the light of the news, Isabella and her entourage left San Sebastián and went to exile taking a train to Biarritz, France, on 30 September. As Isabella entered France after her abdication, her train passed a group of homecoming exiles who taunted her with cries of, down with the Bourbons, long live liberty. And, long live the Republic. Prim, leader of the liberal progressives, was received in a festive mood by the Madrilenian people at his arrival in the capital in early October. He pronounced his famous speech of the, three nevers, directed against the Bourbons, at the Puerta del Sol, he gave a highly symbolic hug to Serrano, the leader of the revolutionary forces triumphant in the bridge of Alcali. Following the crossing of the French-Spanish border by train on 30 September, the Queen and her husband spent five weeks in the Château de Pau organizing their Parisian future. They went to the French capital and Arusia, who assumed the political management of the family. The first Spanish Republic that followed Amadeo's short reign was overthrown by a military coup started in Segunto by General Arsenio Martinez Campos on 29 December 1874 that proclaimed the restoration of the monarchy and the Bourbon dynasty in the person of Isabella's son Alfonso XII, who landed in Barcelona on 9 January 1875. After 1875 she lived in a relationship with Ramiro de la Puente y González Nandine, her secretary and chief of staff. Canovas del Castillo, the dominant figure of the new regime, became convinced that the figure of Isabella had become an issue for the crown and wrote her a letter bluntly stating, Your Majesty is not a person, it is a reign, it is a historical time, and what the country needs is another reign, a different time, hellbent on avoiding the former queen stepping onto the Spanish capital before the proclamation of the new constitution in June 1876. She returned to Spain in July 1876, stayed in Santander and El Escorial and was only allowed to visit Madrid for barely hours on 13 October. She moved to Seville, where she stood longer and left for France in 1877. Isabella's son would marry Mercedes of Orleans, first cousin of Alfonso and daughter of the Dukes of Montpensier, in 1878, only for the latter to die five months after the wedding. Isabella mostly lived in Paris for the rest of her life, based at the Palacio Castilla. She paid some visits to Seville. 
she wrote her testament in Paris in June 1901, making her will to be entombed in El Escorial. Less than a month after passing through a cold categorized as flu by the physicians, she died on 9 April 1904, at 8.45 a.m. Her corpse was moved from the Palacio Castilla to the Gare d'Orsay, and arrived to El Escorial on 15 April. The funeral took place on the next day at San Francisco El Grande. Thanks for watching. Subscribe my channel for more videos.